Hello everyone, The Snowman here, and today we're going to continue our preview series for the 2019 Women's World Cup this summer. Today I'm going to talk about the four teams in Group C. Uh, if you haven't caught my Groups A or B preview yet, please check those out as well. But yeah, today we're going to talk about Australia, Italy, Brazil, and Jamaica. So let's dive into Group C. We'll begin with the heavy favorites in this group, Australia. And they qualify for this World Cup thanks to winning their qualifying group and making it to the final of the Asian Cup where they fell to Japan 1-0. Uh, overall, it was a solid campaign, a little bit disappointing not to win that Asian Cup, which they were uh, the favorites in, but overall, still a good run of form lately. They have won their last four friendlies, and they do have an upcoming matchup against the United States, so that'll be a good benchmark as well. But it's worth noting that the Matildas have had the most success against the United States women's national team over the last couple of years uh, in two Tournament of Nations matchups against the Stars and Stripes. Uh, Australia has a 1-0 win and a 1-1 tie. So they've had the USA's number. They're one of the best teams in the nation and uh, it was a pretty comfortable qualification process. Now there is some uncertainty in terms of the coaching situation for Australia. They recently hired Ante Milicic in February of 2019. He's probably gonna be the newest head coach at the World Cup. Uh, shockingly fired uh, Alan Stajic, who had been with the team since 2014, took them to the quarterfinals of the World Cup in 2015. So there is some turmoil, there is some uncertainty with that, but um, you know, Milicic, a former assistant with the Australian's men's team, so how will he be able to write this ship? The good thing though is Milicic will be able to rely on the backbone of this team, the star of stars, and that is Sam Kerr, who is probably the best player in the world right now, I would say that. Uh, she's right there, Otta Hagerberg has a case, uh, a couple other players definitely have a case, but Sam Kerr, for my money, is the best player in the world. Uh, just 25 years of age, she's the leading goal scorer in two professional leagues, both the Australian Professional League and the United States Professional League. And again, just 25. Uh, she's a game changer, though. She is a one-woman army, can score inside the box, outside the box, uh, left foot, right foot, header, any way you want it from set piece with her knee. It doesn't matter, really. Kirk can score uh, just goals in any way. Uh, she dominates in the NWSL, has led the league in goal scoring the last two years won the MVP in 2017. Uh, she is the undisputed leader of this Australian team. She's fearless. She has uh, just a way of galvanizing her teammates, puts winning before everything else, and Kerr is an absolute uh, game changer, like I said. So one of the very best players at France 2019. You have to catch Kerr at least once. Expectations, they'll come to France looking to win the World Cup. They have the talent to do so. I'll be shocked if they do not come away uh, on top of this Group C. Uh, they should be at least aiming to do one better than in 2015, hopefully make the semifinals. I think that's a reasonable expectation. You can probably uh, pencil them in for a Final Four appearance winning, though. It's going to be tough, but uh, that's certainly where they're setting the bar for this summer. Now we get to the second best team on paper in Group C. That is Brazil, and there's some good news, bad news with the South American champions. First off, the good news uh, they qualified very easily, won their, what, seventh Copa America title. They were 7-0 in qualifying, 31 goals for, just two against. Uh, it's not really a strong region like Europe, but nonetheless, they just bossed it around, crushed every team in South America. Uh, the bad news, though, they have lost their last five matches now. And, yes, tough opponents, France, Japan, the USA, and England twice, but they are, uh, they're on a five-match losing streak, and I don't think this World Cup squad is as strong as the last few years. They're relying on some aging superstars, and uh, I'll talk about that when I get to their expectations, but right now Brazil is, is a little bit cold. Now, they do have some experience to fall back on with their head coach, Vidal, who is in his second stint as the Brazilian head coach. He was their coach at the last World Cup in 2015. And uh, under Vidal, Brazil has won the Pan American Games. They finished fourth at the Rio Olympics in 2016. And they also won the aforementioned Copa America title. So he's had success. Someone else who's had a lot of success, to put it mildly, Marta, who is the star of this Brazil team, still at age 33. I feel like she should be 53 for how long I've been watching her dominate the world football scene. Um, she's still among the Globe's elite. She can do so many things so quick. Tremendous foot skills, that Brazilian flair. Uh, she is just a nightmare to cover in one-on-one -on -one space. Also one of the best all-time in terms of set pieces. She makes plays for her teammates. She's a five-time World Player of the Year from 2006 to 2010. So uh, Marta, her resume speaks for itself. Countless MVPs. Uh, she's got a World Cup golden ball as well as a golden boot. Uh, right now she's playing with Alex Morgan on the Orlando Pride. And uh, Marta, you know, she's class, but will she have enough help 
I'm worried that uh, they haven't developed enough younger players in the last few years because Marta and Cristiani and 41-year-old defensive midfielder Formiga are not going to be around forever. They need the new wave of football and they, they need it right now in Brazil. So because they lack that injection of new, fresh energy, uh, I'm tempering my expectations for Brazil just a bit at this World Cup. In 2015, they exited in the round of 16. Uh, this year, I've got them just a peg or two below the true title contenders. I think they should qualify for the knockout stage pretty comfortably. But uh, overall, you know, I, I don't have them with the USAs, the Frances, the Australias. For Brazil, I think a successful World Cup would be if they made the quarterfinals. Let's talk about Italy now, and we know how good the Italian men have been for years, but this uh, women's team really coming into their own now, and they qualified for this World Cup in dominating fashion. Uh, they booked their first World Cup appearance in 20 years by stampeding to a first place finish in a European group that included both Belgium and Portugal. They were 7-1 and one in qualifying, and their only loss came on the final match day. That was to Belgium when everything was already wrapped up. So they've got a lot to be proud of. They're not really a marquee European football power uh, like Germany, like France, like England, but it's definitely a program on the rise, and uh, they're in good form right now. The coach of Italy, Milena Bertolini, a former central defender for Italy for 17 years, a very successful resume as a player, and something I was reading about her that caught my eye, she, uh, she's determined to help Italy recover after a very stale last 15 years in terms of both success and recruitment. Uh, she said she wants to increase the youth talent pool for future Italian generations. She's determined to grow the game, and I think that's great because, like I said with Brazil, they've got a lot of good players still, but they're all in their 30s, and uh, Italy kind of the same thing, so they're trying to get that uh, fountain of youth and uh, more props to Bertolini. For star player, I've got a two-part answer. First off, Barbara Bonincea, a, uh, the new leader of this team, very talented and speedy winger on the flank, very difficult to corral. She's got many accolades with Juventus, and she's right in the prime of her career now at age 27. So she's, she's a huge component of this Italian attacking prowess up front, the Serie A Footballer of the Year in 2016. And another big piece of that attack is Cristiana Girelli, who is a clinical striker, seven goals in European qualifying to lead this team. And she also plays for Juve. A lot of continuity for Italy. Uh, most of their players play together in Serie A, so uh, that's definitely something they have going for them ahead of this World Cup. Expectations, they're a fun team. They likely won't make a deep run, but they're going to score a bundle of goals in their last seven matches. They've scored at least two goals in all of them, including a 5-2 defeat to Germany. So there's going to be some fun results. A uh, good chance of finishing third in this Group C and making the round of 16. They'd probably be very elated if that were to happen. But I think uh, the knockout stage is the ceiling for Italy. Finally, we get to the Jamaicans, and it was a long journey to get to their first ever World Cup Finals. They had to go through Caribbean qualifying first, and they were able to win that, get through that. Then uh, second place in their final group to reach the semifinals. They lost to the USA 6-0 in Frisco, Texas. That was just a, a total mismatch on paper and on the field. Uh, USA put on a clinic, but then it all came down to the third place playoff game for Jamaica. It was them versus Panama for a spot in the World Cup, and that game ended up being 2-2. It went into penalty kicks, and Jamaica did not miss a single one. They won that shootout 4-2, and their inaugural trip was booked to the World Cup Finals. The head coach of the reggae girls, Hugh Menzies, who's got over 30 years of experience coaching youth soccer in Florida, actually, just took the reins of Jamaica in 2014, and he helped Jamaica not only book their first ticket to the World Cup Finals, but become the first Caribbean team to ever reach the World Cup, so uh, Menzies in the record books. Someone else who's in the record books for what she did last year, Khadija Shah, a 22-year-old striker who had 19 goals to lead all players throughout Women's World Cup qualifying. That's across all regions, more than Alex Morgan, more than Marta, more than whoever. Uh, Shaw was the leading goal scorer of the qualifying campaign. Uh, so fast, so strong, plays right now at the University of Tennessee. So Shaw will be leading the Jamaican attack up front. And they've also got a great player for the future, 16-year-old Jody Brown, who uh, scored and assisted in that penalty win over Panama to reach the World Cup. And she can do a little bit of everything, was named the best young player of the CONCACAF Women's Championships. With uh, Brown and Shaw leading the way, I think the future uh, is in pretty good hands. Now, for expectations, we have to get a little bit serious now. I would be flabbergasted if Jamaica were to make it out of the group. 
Um, I think they are going to be one of the best stories of the World Cup. They would be so thrilled if they could make the knockout stage. But I just, I just can't see that happening. Uh, too many defensive holes, not enough shape in the back. They've had very few clean sheets over their last few friendlies. I'm rooting for them. I just think it's going to be a tough World Cup nonetheless. I'm very happy that Jamaica is at uh, the 2019 World Cup. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please check out my other uh, World Cup preview videos, Group A, Group B, and my draw reaction that I did back in December. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Again, please subscribe to the Snowman Sports Media. Give me a thumbs up, and I'll be back very soon. Cheers.